In the long and bloody story of human conflict, few wars have been as costly and ruinous as the bitter five-year-long struggle fought by the tiny South American nation of Paraguay against a vast triple alliance of neighbouring Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay. Despite facing overwhelming and near-impossible odds, the Paraguayan people stubbornly fought on to the brink of annihilation, refusing to back down or surrender until there was almost nobody in their country left alive. The vicious war reducing Paraguay to an apocalyptic hellscape of death, destruction and suffering, as battle, disease and starvation wiped out an estimated two-thirds of the entire population, with just 28,000 men over the age of 15 left alive by the time peace was declared. A staggering death toll which suggests that as many as 9 out of every 10 men in Paraguay lost their lives in what was the bloodiest and most deadly war ever fought in South America, and one of the costliest wars in history. After obtaining independence from the declining empires of Spain and Portugal, the newly born nations of South America were not only faced with the formidable challenge of establishing their own governments and institutions, but also with resolving extensive and escalating territorial disputes caused by the vague and often undefined national and regional borders they inherited from their former colonial overlords. With nearly every country on the continent engaged in border disputes with its neighbours, long-term peace would be an impossible dream until these overlapping territorial claims were amicably settled. However, many of the region's leaders held expansionist ambitions and saw these boundary quarrels as an easy way to win popular support at home. President Lopez of Paraguay was one such strongman leader, and by 1864 he had introduced mandatory military service and built up the Paraguayan army to over 60,000 men in an effort to strengthen his country's influence in the region. However, Paraguay was a relatively small, landlocked nation that was surrounded by the much larger empires of Brazil and Argentina, the preeminent powers of the continent. Brazil and Argentina viewed the smaller republics of Paraguay and Uruguay as little more than breakaway provinces firmly within their rightful spheres of influence, and frequently meddled in the internal politics of their junior neighbours. However, the region's fragile peace would be finally shattered with the Uruguayan coup of 1864. The coup leader had the full backing of Brazil, however concerned that a newly pro-Brazilian Uruguay would unfavourably alter the region's balance of power, Paraguay immediately lent its support to the ousted Uruguayan president and demanded that Brazil withdraw all support for the usurper. The demand was promptly ignored, and with neither side willing to back down, President Lopez of Paraguay decided to flex his newly acquired military muscle, mobilizing his formidable 60,000 strong army, seizing a Brazilian ship docked at his capital, and occupying a highly disputed mineral-rich region on the Brazilian border, and claiming the entire province for Paraguay. Yet if this wasn't provocative enough, he then decided to march on Uruguay and forcibly remove the coup leader who was attempting to install himself as president, making the foolhardy decision to send his troops through Argentinian territory despite being denied permission, promptly declaring war on Argentina in retaliation for their refusal to cooperate. Before the Paraguayan invasion force had a chance to bring its arms to bear and alter the outcome of the Uruguayan coup, the coup leader emerged victorious and formed a new government that immediately threw its support behind Argentina, vowing to defend them against Paraguayan aggression in the hour of need, and the pair were soon joined by Brazil, all three nations signing the Treaty of the Triple Alliance and committing to prosecute the war until the government of Paraguay was overthrown. With a population of just 450,000, the tiny nation of Paraguay now stood alone against a menacing triple alliance whose combined population was over 11 million. What would become known in Paraguay as the Great War had begun. Faced with so many enemies on so many fronts, the Paraguayan force which had earlier entered Brazilian territory and attempted to seize an entire province was forced to withdraw in the face of the enemy, falling back to the city of Uruguayana, which they fortified in preparation for a siege. In Argentina, the Paraguayan division of 3,200 men sent to invade Uruguay and forcibly depose the coup leader was utterly annihilated at the Battle of Yate on the banks of the Uruguay River, with 2,000 killed or wounded and 1,200 captured. 
With the stream at their backs, any kind of orderly retreat was out of the question. Yet despite possessing no artillery and facing a combined Triple Alliance army over three times their number, the Paraguayans fought with a level of grit and tenacity that would define the rest of the war. The costly battle a grim harbinger of the many fights still to come. Their brave but stubborn refusal to give in no matter the odds, drawing out the war long after it was clear that all hope of victory had already been lost. The invasion force had barely made it 100 miles into Argentinian territory before being halted. To make matters even worse, just weeks after the disaster at Yate, the remaining Paraguayan troops in Brazil surrendered the city of Uruguayana when their food ran out. The 5,545 men still alive taken prisoner, with nearly 2,500 of their comrades left dead inside the city's walls from hunger and disease. The brash and aggressive Paraguayan offences into enemy territory that had marked the opening stages of the conflict were over. From now on, the remainder of the war would be fought on Paraguayan soil at immense cost to her people. By the beginning of 1866, the Paraguayan navy had been destroyed, allowing the Allies to safely blockade the rivers leading into Paraguay, hampering the army's mobility and halting any movement of badly needed supplies. And by April, the combined forces of the Triple Alliance invaded Paraguay. The Paraguayan army managed to win some minor victories against the invading Triple Alliance, but the sheer scale of the forces arrayed against them forced the Paraguayans to pull back deeper into Paraguayan territory. However, a proud and impetuous President Lopez could only stomach so much retreat. After learning that the Allies intended to attack his headquarters near Tuyuti, the Paraguayan president made his biggest blunder of the war, ordering his men to abandon their well-defended trenches and launch a massive surprise attack against the enemy on the 24th of May, 1866, throwing 25,000 of his best troops into what would become the largest battle of the war and the bloodiest battle in Latin American history. The swampy terrain of Tiyiti would have been the perfect place to defend against any allied attack. However, by abandoning their fortifications, the Paraguayan soldiers were now forced to advance over the very natural obstacles that might have hindered their enemies and potentially turned the tide of battle in their favour. Instead, it was the relieved men of the Triple Alliance army who dug in deep and prepared to meet the Paraguayans, who were struggling towards them across the swampy, open ground, under constant rifle and artillery fire every step of the way. With no artillery support, waves of Paraguayans bravely threw themselves forward, only to be quickly cut down by cruel volleys of enemy fire as shot and shell decimated their ranks, wiping out entire battalions. Those who managed to somehow survive the terrible carnage and make it within sight of the Alliance trenches found their approach blocked by a deep, hidden moat the Allies had secretly dug before the battle. The beleaguered Paraguayans attempted to circle around the moat and continued their advance, however they were now within grapeshot range, the enemy artillery wasting no time greedily pouring devastating volleys of lethally accurate fire into their flanks. As the battle wore on and the casualties mounted, the now heavily depleted Paraguayan columns were finally encircled and destroyed. President Lopez's grand plan to catch the enemy off guard with a surprise attack was an unmitigated disaster. The cream of his military had been destroyed in a single afternoon of fighting. His finest army had been thrown away in a reckless gamble. 6,000 Paraguayans lay dead on the field, with a further 7,000 injured. In a testament to just how brave and defiant the Paraguayans were, only 350 unwounded prisoners were taken, the majority refusing to surrender no matter how bleak the situation was, continuing to fight until they were either killed or incapacitated. Never again would President Lopez be able to field an army of comparable strength. The rest of the war would be spent in perpetual retreat, his remaining scattered and broken forces fighting desperate rearguard actions as Paraguay burned, and her people slowly succumbed to starvation, disease, and battle. In fact, the extreme deprivation slowly taking root amongst the Paraguayan population is said to have already been fully visible in the aftermath of the Battle of Tuyuti. The Allied troops tasked with disposing of Paraguayan corpses in piles of 100, complaining that they were so lean that they would not burn, an observation that shows just how bad food shortages were becoming. 
Yet although the Paraguayan attack had ultimately failed, the Allies themselves had been left weakened by the sheer ferocity of the fight they had endured, and were unable to pursue their beaten foes and deliver the death blow. Four months later, yet another Paraguayan defeat occurred at the Battle of Curuzu, as a relentless Brazilian naval bombardment followed by vicious hand-to-hand -hand trench warfare ultimately overwhelmed the desperate Paraguayan defenders, the decisive defeat even forcing President Lopez to the negotiating table. The once proud militarist realised that his army was utterly beaten, however no peace could be agreed as the Allies insisted that the war would only end with his removal from power. For a man like Lopez, giving up his position was unthinkable. The hopeless war would continue. Buoyed by their successes, the overconfident Allies carried out a disastrous full frontal attack on an entrenched Paraguayan force at the Battle of Curupeti, losing an incredible 8,000 men for just 250 Paraguayans, a defeat which halted their offensive for a further 10 months. For the long-suffering Paraguayan people, it must have seemed as though the war would never end. In July of 1868, the Allies besieged and captured Humaita, a fortress known as the Gibraltar of South America, and one which had guarded the approach to the Paraguayan capital. With the gateway into the heartlands of Paraguay now open, the capital finally fell on January 5, 1869. However, President Lopez still refused to surrender. The defiant Paraguayan president fled north to wage a guerrilla war that would nearly doom his people to extinction. Known as the Campaign of the Hills, this bitter guerrilla war lasted for over a year, bringing with it rampant disease spread and widespread famine. However, the shattered and starving Paraguayan army was by now largely made up of untrained old men and children, armed with machetes, bayonets, and whatever else they could find. The veteran soldiers of the Triple Alliance were shocked to discover that the enemy attacking them were often no older than 14 years old. The boys conscripted into the Paraguayan army since there were virtually no fighting age men left alive. As his country and grand ambitions fell apart, so too did the Paraguayan president's sanity. An atmosphere of fear and paranoia descended upon the Paraguayan camp, as anyone suspected of defeatism was immediately executed. Those still alive fought with renewed vigour and fanaticism, often until the death, in an effort to demonstrate their unwavering loyalty and dedication to the cause. Lopez was convinced that he had been undone not by his own personal failures, but by the insidious actions of a hidden group of traitors and conspirators, and hundreds perished in his hunt for this invisible, internal enemy, with even his own two brothers and two brothers-in-law executed for defeatism and treason. The madness was finally put to an end on March 1, 1870, when Lopez was cornered and killed by Brazilian forces, his death concluding a ruinous conflict which had seen Paraguay's population at least cut in half. Of perhaps a quarter of a million starving citizens who had barely survived the war, just 28,000 were men, suggesting that as much as 90% of Paraguay's male population perished in the war, making it one of the most statistically dangerous and costliest conflicts in human history. Thanks for watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you again soon.